why is it that 90% of the churches are in the United States of America reaching about 5% of the world's population? The sad thing is, it is a secret. It's a secret to over 7.5 billion people. They have never, most of this world have never heard of Christ. I was, uh, so we were soul winning uh, down in Denver in an area that is, has a very high uh, concentration of folks from India. And uh, time and time I'd knock on their doors in their housing development and I'd ask them, do you know anything about Jesus? And they said, no heard the name, heard about this person called Jesus, but they said, we know nothing about Jesus. They're from India, they grew up in the Hindu culture, and they, they know nothing. India, and Iran, and Afghanistan, and Pakistan, and, and North Korea, and, and many of the other countries, it's against the law to talk about Jesus, they get, uh, I I was reading this afternoon about different countries, and uh, it is estimated that there's, near, uh, there's somewhere around 300,000 Christians supposedly living in North Korea. If they get caught, they get sent to labor camps where they're never seen again, uh, dead or alive. Uh, they meet privately, uh, secretly, knowing that if they get caught, they're, they're going to die. China is one of the most, one of, a country with one of the greatest persecutions. As a matter of fact, uh, North Korea is so bad that North Korean, North Korean people cross over the, the mountains to try to get into China for, for religious liberty. Um, uh, and, and China is, has, has great persecution. They, since the, they had the Olympics, they began stronger persecution among Christians. They'll bulldoze down church buildings, uh, in prison, and Christian, any Christians that they're found. They began uh, writing their own Bible to, to push their communistic agendas. Uh, it's, it's bad. But we in America, we're, we're, we're so content knowing we know Jesus. Who cares about anybody else? It's kind of like our water. We have... We have water here. The number one most needed commodity in the world is water. And here in America, we have so much clean water, we flush our toilets with it. The same water that, that runs through the, the pipes that we drink out of in the sink is the same water that runs through our pipes that fills our toilet up that we flush it down the drain. And so much of the world would love to have water as clean as our toilet water. And we have Jesus, but, we're, but, but most of the world doesn't. How crucial it is for us as Americans to open our eyes to the need of Christ throughout this world. If, if, if I knock on doors in Denver from people from India who've never heard about Jesus, what do you think the, the, the percentage of people in India hearing the gospel I remember, uh, I can't remember who told me the story, it was, a, it was a pastor who had gone to India and they were in a taxi cab and the, the, the preacher asked the taxi cab if they'd ever heard, seen a Bible and the taxi cab driver responded, oh that's Mickey Mouse. He says, he says we've, we've all heard of it but, it but it's not real. And the, the preacher got, his, got a Bible out of his suitcase in the back seat and handed it to him. It was the first time in his life. This, this, is a, this is an older gentleman driving a taxi there in India. It was the first time in his life he'd ever even seen a copy of a Bible. Nobody, nobody he'd, he'd never seen one. He thought it was a fictitious uh, book that, that was made up by American Hollywood, just like Mickey Mouse, not real, just, just a story. If we don't wake up, then uh, we're going to stand before God one day. And God's going to say, what did you do? What, what were you thinking? 
And um, if you have your Bible, turn to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Please, please, please uh, get involved in missions in this church. And uh, you, more important than any other monthly bill that you have is getting the gospel out. I, you say, preacher, don't you think that's a little extreme? I think my house payment's a little more important than missions. You, 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 can, you, can, you, know, you can do without a house. Denver, Denver has 10,000 people living homeless today. They're still surviving. Uh, but without the gospel going around the world, they're going to hell. I would rather go to heaven without a house knowing that I did as much as I could to get got the gospel around the world to get people saved, then I would know that I have a nice house and uh, I'm saved and I have a nice house and, and people are dying going to hell that I don't care about. That's, that's, I, I, listen, I'm, I'm not here to sugarcoat anything. I sugarcoat stuff when it comes to dessert, but this ain't dessert. I love sweets, I love ice cream, and I love Hershey syrup, and I love, I love, uh, I don't know if any of y'all are, have any type of Greek in you, but I love baklava, and uh, you can have your European desserts that don't have sugar, I'll take the baklava from Greece that, that has lots and lots and lots of sugar, and uh, it's just one layer of honey with a thin pa- a, a, a piece of dough so thin you can see through it, and then another layer of honey, and then another piece of br- uh, thin bread, another layer of honey. Man, it's good. My tongue will slap my brains out trying to get to it. But I'll still eat my fried okra, brother. Amen. There you go. Listen, I, I, it's serious. Missions is serious. Get involved in the mission program. Challenge yourself Amen. to say, you know, it's not worth it for me to live so comfortably while people around the world are dying going to hell. Be willing to sacrifice a little bit. Listen, I'm not telling you to live homeless. But I will tell you, I would rather live homeless knowing that I'm getting people saved around the world than live in a house not caring. One day when I stand before God and God says, tell me about what you've done in your life, He's not going to care what kind of house I had. He's not going He left His home in glory. I think that's a better house than anything we could have on earth. He left His home in glory to come to earth and at least during a portion of His ministry, He told the man who who said, I'll follow you whithersoever thou goest. He said to that man, the foxes of the hole, foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. If Jesus thought it was worthy and worth it to leave heaven and come to earth and, and not have a place to lay his head so that he can go to Calvary and suffer and die for you and me, I think he thinks it's worth it to get the gospel out at whatever cost it may take. Whatever suffering it might take, it's worth it. We sang the song earlier, uh, The Footprints of Jesus. And that's, 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 that's why the gospel got around all of Asia Minor within a hundred years. Because people were willing to sacrifice whatever they had to get the gospel out. That's why the Apostle Paul said, for me to die, for me to live is Christ, and for me to die is gain. He says, says, my life, listen, the Apostle Paul was not a poor man. Before he got saved, he was a wealthy man. Uh, individual who had a prominent political position he had a reputable name uh, and he says you know I'm gonna leave it all behind so I can serve Christ why because it was real to him it was real to him get involved in missions 
Get involved in missions. Every boy, every girl, every teenager, every adult, get involved in the mission program. Get, realize that you have an opportunity to partner with missionaries around the world to get people saved. That's not a light thing. If you, uh, if, if you were to have invested in Apple 10 years ago, $1,000. Today, 10 years later, your $1,000 would be worth about $90,000. If you had $1,000 to invest 10 years ago, would you have done it? Would you change 1000 to 90000 I mean, honestly, would you have done that? If you, if you could have known the future and known that in 10 years, if you invested $1,000 10 years ago into Apple, and now it would be $90,000, I think all of us would say, you know, I think that's a pretty good deal. If, if, you don't think, if you don't think it's a good deal, how about this? How about I give you $1 and then, then I give you back, and, then, and then, then you give me $90? No? You don't like that idea? Would you like it if you gave me $1 and I gave you back $90? Yeah. That's, that's the equivalent. Listen. There's no greater... I, I know where the investment in missions gets me. It gets me souls in heaven. You understand that? You invest in missions, it equates to souls getting saved and going to heaven because of our willingness to sacrifice a little bit. That's worth more than $90,000. Do you understand? Not all of us can go to China. Not all of us can go to the Philippines. Not all of us can go to Brazil. Not all of us can go to Bolivia. Not all of us can go, to the, go over to the 1040 window of the, and, and, and to Iran and, and Saudi Arabia and uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all the other Stan brothers. Not all of us can go to Russia. Not all of us can go to the Ukraine. So let's help people get there. Get involved in the mission program. The, the radio ministry, getting the gospel all over the world. We, 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 you're, we're not familiar with the, the shortwave radio here in America because, because we, we use FM and AM radio and now it's all going digital and, and we use Cirrus and, and uh, Pandora and all this other stuff. But around the world they use what's called shortwave radio. Shortwave radio signals travels for hundreds of miles. And, and they brought, they're able to broadcast on shortwave radio and get the gospel around the world. But it, they have to pay to keep all that machinery up and running. They've got to pay for licenses. They've got to pay for broadcasting. You can have a part in that. By saying, you know, I think that cheeseburger ain't quite worth what I thought it was. Maybe that cup of Starbucks ain't quite worth what I thought it was. And take that money and put it in missions. And I'll go further. Maybe working a little extra overtime to go on vacation is, may not be as important as working a little overtime to go to missions. Maybe getting a part-time job to, uh, to pay for that bass boat isn't as important as getting a part-time job to pay for missions. I, I, I know of a lady who got a part-time job working in a real estate office and, she, and all the, the only reason she got the part-time job at the real estate office was so that she could give money to missions. She wanted to give more money to missions. An uh, economic downturn came. Every other realtor, almost every other realtor got laid off except for her. And she got, her, she got more work during an economic downturn, but she didn't keep any of the money. Everything that she brought in through real estate went to admissions. God blessed her, not because, listen, she, didn't, she wasn't keeping any of it. She was giving it to missions. So many stories. So, 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 so uh, an, another man, he, he became a, 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 a very, very wealthy businessman. He said the only reason he got into business was because he wanted to give more to missions. God blessed him. A farmer, uh, during a missions conference, he says, you know, I want to give something to the missions. And so he, he picked one of the fields that he farmed. And it, he, him being a selfish farmer, he picked the least producing field that he owned and said, everything that comes off this field, I'm going to give to missions. 
the least producing field in a bottom that always got flooded all of a sudden became the most productive field he owned. Because he said, Lord, everything on this field is yours. Everything on this field I'm de dedicating to missions. And God blessed that field, and, and he got to see the miracle of God turn, a, turn, a, turn an ugly, nasty, non-producing bottom into the most fruitful field he owned. Because of missions. Because of missions. Say, oh, I know, I'm going to get rich. I'm going to start giving money to missions. It don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It works when you say, I love God enough to give. And whatever happens, happens, but I want to give. And, and God sees that, that love in your heart, and God sees that sacrifice of you're willing to do something for him. And he says, you know, I'm going to reward that probably. Luke chapter 8. I better get my phone out here and uh, see what time it is so I can end sometime before midnight. Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 8, starting in uh, verse 26. This is a story that you've heard probably many times, and, and uh, I'm going to go over it again. I just want to show you a little something that God showed me earlier this year, and hopefully it'll be a blessing to you. Before I read, I'm going to pray, because <clears throat> after I read, I'm going to jump, jump on, the, on the flight line and take off. Because by the time I get to soaring, soaring altitude, it's time for me to land again. Father, I thank you so much for your love. I thank you for missions. I thank you for giving us the privilege of getting the gospel to this world. Lord, help us to take it seriously. Help us, Lord, tonight. Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll have your will and way in this, in this service tonight. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll open our hearts. I pray that you'll rip from our chest a heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. I pray for your Holy Spirit conviction in our lives. I pray for your guidance. I pray, Holy Spirit of God, move from person to person in this room tonight. Uh, fill us with your power. Fill us with your wisdom and guidance and show us what you'd have for us to do. And Lord, I pray if there's anyone here in this room tonight that has a heart that's willing, I pray that you'll call them to the mission field. I pray that you will help them to surrender their life to your, to your will, to your service, to do whatever you'd have for them to do. I pray, Lord, that you'll use this ministry in Longmont here, Hopewell Baptist Church, to do a great work and be a brighter light than ever in this community for the gospel. And God, I just pray that, that you'll use this service and use me, Father, for your glory and for your honor. And uh, as I preach tonight, amen. <clears throat> Verse 26. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. But when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, thou son of, the, of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, and for all times it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he brake the bands and was driven out, uh, driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because, the, because many devils had, were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Uh, and, there, uh, and, and there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. And, he, and then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake where they were choked. When they, uh, when they, were fed, uh, when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it into the city and in the country, and they, which, they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and, and they were afraid. They also, which saw it, told them by what means he, had, he that was possessed of the devil was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes around about besought him to depart from them, 
for they were taken with great fear. Uh, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. That, now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way, and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'll help me tonight, and use this sermon for your glory. Amen. This man here, uh, often referred to as the maniac of the Gadarenes, or Gadara, uh, <clears throat> It's always an interesting story, and I've heard many sermons on it myself, and I've preached sermons on it. But I want to talk about this sermon in a, because it greatly applies to missions. Now you have to understand at this point in history, Christ was still on earth. The gospel was still centralized in, in the area right around uh, Israel and, and uh, the Holy Land. And, so, and, and it hadn't gone out a whole lot further than that. Over the next hundred years, it would, uh, the, according to the book of uh, Acts, it would have gotten all over Asia Minor and over into Europe. And uh, even down into Africa, and uh, probably even over into the western portions of China. <clears throat> the, the, the wise men that came when Jesus was born would have came from the land between Israel and China. But this, this man, the more I looked at him, the more I tried to understand who this man was. History tells us that, that, that uh, in, in various places we, you can find that they say this, this maniac this man, this, this crazy man who lived among the tombs, this is, this is kind of the story of the, of the, the kids' tale on, on camping trips, you know, this crazy man in the graveyards. <clears throat> I used to work in a funeral home, and I tell you, working with dead people gives you a little bit of craziness. <laughs> Isn't that right, Brother Mahaffey? Um, but <clears throat> stories from college, don't ask. Um, <laughs> but, but we, um, this man, whatever his past may have been, we can read a few things into the story. He had been, he had been cast out of the town. He had no friends. He must have been quite depressed. I, I personally know how bad it feels to feel abandoned by those that you care about, to be abandoned by family members. Uh, I won't go into great detail, but my mom and dad separated when I was five years old, and anybody who goes through divorce knows what abandonment feels like. Uh, I, I suffered um, molestation at very early ages, uh, sexual abuse. Uh, abuse leaves quite a bit of scarring in a person's heart and mind, and and emotions. This man has had been had suffered abuse. He was chained to grave to, to, to gravestones in a cemetery. Can you imagine what would have gone through this man's mind? As not only was he kicked out of town by his family members and friends, but he was chained in graveyards. Not too long ago, a few years ago, there was a, a story that came out uh, here in Colorado. A, a lady was, uh, was uh, found. She had locked her children in closets for years and uh, starved them. And she was arrested and, and, uh, for child abuse. And the children were able to get help, and I thank God for that. But we think about that kind of thing. And we think, How can someone do that? Well, here's a, here's some, here's a man... Who, who at one time was profitable to society. At one time, I'm sure he was. He he probably he had he had a family. He had a mom and dad. He he, he maybe even had a wife and children and uh, brother brothers and and sisters and uncles and aunts and and cousins and and nieces and nephews. And all his family said, "We don't want nothing to do with you." 
we want nothing to do with you. It hurts when family says they don't want anything to do with you. I have a, a, a gentleman who comes to our church. He's a born-again Jew. And it's hard because in the, Jewish, in the Jewish faith, if you convert to Christianity, your family disowns you. They actually have a funeral service for you. And they consider you dead. And he, he's lived a great portion of his life with his family not even speaking to him. Abandonment hurts. This man had been abandoned. He had tried to get help all everywhere he could, but nobody wanted to help him. Nobody could help him. And he, is, he suffered with the abuse, and he suffered with the, with the a, a, a abandonment. He's been cursed at, I guarantee you. He's been cursed at. He's been sworn at. He's been insulted. He's been spit at. Little kids have come up to him and screamed running away out of fear. When all he wanted was a friend who cared about him. Somebody to care about him. The city of the Gadarenes was just right on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. There was plenty of religious people around. But nobody cared about this man. Not, I'm, I'm, there's a good chance he had religious family members. But nobody cared about this man. Nobody tried to help this man. They just wanted to get rid of him. They didn't want to see him. They didn't want to be reminded of the pain and the suffering. They didn't want to be reminded of who he was. They just cast him out. The Bible teaches us that this man would, would, would practice self-mutilation. He would cut himself. Cutting, cutting is, is nothing new to, to the, the 21st century. It's nothing new to kids these days. Listen, if, if, you, if you cut yourself or if you know somebody who cuts yourself and practice self-mutilation, please come to your preacher. Miss Pam and Brother Sulian, Brother and Mrs. Sulian, let me get this right. Uh, they care about you and they want to help you. They want to help you. If you know somebody who's, who's cutting themselves, please, please, encourage them to come to the preacher and his wife. This man cut himself. This man was chained in the graveyards. This man suffered. But thankfully, this man had heard about Jesus. And when Jesus had come across the Sea of Galilee with his disciples, this man went to meet Jesus. The Bible says that when Jesus came forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man. There met him. Listen, if you're hurting today, there's somebody that can help. His name is Jesus. You say, but he's the one that let it happen. No, the devil's the one that let it happen, made it happen. Jesus is the one that can help you. It's the lie of Satan to try to keep you from getting, get, getting to Christ who can help you. Listen, family members can hurt you. Friends can hurt you. Society can hurt you. Satan wants to destroy you and get you away from Jesus because he's the only one that can help you. And by the way, he's the only one that can help anybody in this world. Shame on us if we keep Christ a secret to those who need to hear him the most. Thankfully, somehow or another, this man had heard about Jesus. And when Jesus came across the land there, he met Jesus there. He didn't have any clothes on. The Bible said he, he wear no clothes. But Jesus says, there's something this man needs and I'm going to help him. You know, it's a shame that so many Christians, when they see someone with raggedy gold clothes on, they don't smell good, they don't look good, they, they don't talk very good, they have teeth missing, they, their hair is all nappy, they, 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 they're uh, Christians will say, oh, you know, no, I don't think, I, I, I don't have time right now. Thank, thankfully, Jesus, Jesus took time 
to help this man. He didn't look right, didn't talk right, didn't smell right. He was probably even a Broncos. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. And uh, <laughs> you say, well, who do you pull for? Um, nobody anymore. Uh, they ruined it all for me. Uh, but, but, uh, but Jesus helped this man. Jesus helped this man. Listen, when, Jesus, when, when he saw Jesus, the de- the, the, he, he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice. Uh, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, the Most High? I beseech thee, torment me not. These are the devils speaking out of him, for he, for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him, and he had kept him bound in chains and fetters, and he broke the bands, and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into them, and they besought him that they that he would not command them to go out into the pit, to the deep. Excuse me. That word deep there is the same word that's that's translated the pit elsewhere and hell elsewhere. The devil said, listen, are you going to send us to hell now? Let me tell you, the devils know there's a hell. The devils know there's a hell. And they don't want to go there. Do you really think the people around the world want to go there? We need to listen. We got to get on the ball. This man was on his way to hell. The devil was going to escort him there. They tried to make him kill himself and try to get him to commit suicide to take this man to hell. And thankfully, this man was able to hold on. Thankfully, this man was able, able to resist the temptation of the suicide. Thankfully, this man was, was able to live long enough to meet Jesus as he came across the Sea of Galilee. But let me ask you, how many don't get that chance? One of the missionary missionary teams from Thailand, I remembered uh, a story of one of them told me that they were out soul winning and they met a man 104 years old. And they led this man to Christ at 104 years old. And it was the first time he'd heard about Christ. After living on this earth for 104 years, thankfully, a missionary was able to go by his house and tell him about Christ, and he received Christ as a Savior because somebody was willing to give money to missionaries so that they could go 104 years old. Thankfully, they got to him in time. But may I remind you, the gospel is only good news if it gets there in time. You've probably heard the story before, uh, but, but a missionary is standing by the T- Genghis River, and uh, a, a lady, lady uh, was sitting there crying, and the missionary uh, walked up to her and, and told her about Jesus, and she got saved. And she said, why couldn't you not have come just a, few, a, l- a little bit earlier? Why couldn't you have been here an hour earlier? And the missionary says, why, what happened an hour earlier? She said, an hour earlier, I threw my child into the river to the, through the gods. The false gods, I threw my child into the river. I killed my child because I didn't know about Jesus. And I offered him to the false gods of the Genghis River. The gospel is only good news if it gets there in time. The average missionary has to stay on deputation for two to three years to get enough support in order to go to the far and field so they can start getting the gospel out. Oh, if Christians weren't so selfish about wanting a new car and wanting a bigger house and wanting the best stuff here in America, maybe more missionaries can get in the field before they die, before hearing the gospel. This man thankfully got the gospel before he committed suicide by the, these, the, these, this, these devils that possessed him. This man got saved. As we go down the story, the man gets saved. And the town comes out. They say, see, see what had happened. They heard about these swine that had, had, committed, that had committed suicide by running off the cliff and, and, and into, the, into the, the, the water. And they died. And they came back and they 
They heard about what Jesus did and they, they heard about the miracle of this man got, getting saved. The man that everybody else had given up on. The man that his own family didn't want anything to do with him anymore. The one that the government said, get him out of here. Jesus changed his life. And everybody said to Jesus, you got to go. They said to Jesus, you got to go. We don't want you here. They said to Jesus, the one who had walked on the water, the one who had healed this man, had cast out the devils, they said, we don't want you here. This man who Jesus just led to Christ, I, can you imagine what, what he was thinking? Listen, if they don't want Jesus here, what are they going to do to me? They've already kicked me out of town. They've already chained me to the cemeteries. They've already abused me. They've already spit on me. They've already rejected me. And they're rejecting Christ. Jesus, we, can I come with you? Jesus says, no. I want you to go tell all those people what I've done. I want you to go tell your family that kicked you out, that, that said they don't want anything to do with you. I want you to go tell your family about me. I want you to go tell those, 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 those uh, uh, city officials what I've done for you. I want you to go tell those businessmen that, 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 that didn't want to help you. They didn't want to feed you. They didn't want, to, they didn't want anything to do with you. I want you to go tell those businessmen that didn't want to invest in you that I invested in you. And I, your life has been changed. Go. Go and tell everybody else what, has, what I've done for you. I can tell you firsthand, it's hard going to the people who've hurt you and trying to seek reconciliation. It is hard going to your abusers and your, your offenders and saying, I'm coming to you. Because Jesus loves you, and I've forgiven you. Wow. I'll tell you, it works. This man, God changed his life. But this man, God said also, to go to the people who've hurt you and get right things right with them and tell them what I've done. God used this man in a great way. We stopped one verse shy of the verse I really want you to look at. Look at this next verse in Luke chapter 8, verse 40. If, if you weren't paying attention, you'd read right over this and it wouldn't make it, it, you, you, you'd never realize it. Luke 8, verse 40. Read it out loud with me. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Wait a minute. This is the same people that said to Jesus, we don't want you here. These are the same people that, the, that, that had taken this man and chained him to the graveyard. This is the same man that they said, this is the same place. This is the Gadarenes. This is the place where the swine ran off into the field and the farmers came and says, how did you do? You've ruined us. What was the difference? I'll tell you what the difference was. God became real to one person. God really became real to one person. And this man who got saved, he got a good dose of it. He 
realized that how, how wicked of a man as he was and, and all the wrong that he had done and that God in all his mercy and all his love reached down and picked him up out of that miry clay out of that old muddy pit and picked him up and set him, set him on that rock and established his going and gave him forgiveness reconciled the wrongs and he got excited about telling people. I believe it in the, is in the Gospel of Mark. It says he published it throughout all of Decapolis. Decapolis was the region, if you so to speak. It'd be the county. Okay? And, and the way we look at it, Decapolis was kind of like the county, and, and Gadara was the, a city in that county. It would be like he was from Longmont. Everybody knew who he was. And nobody wanted anything to do with him. Because he was different. And when he got saved, not only did he tell everybody in Longmont, but he told everybody in Boulder County. He just couldn't stop telling folks about him. He didn't get saved and go out and get a job and buy, build a big house and, 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 and a nice car and, and get everything he wanted. He got busy. He says, listen, I was this close to dying and going to hell before Jesus got a hold of me. And I don't know how far you are from hell yourself. And let's get busy. Let's turn our lives around. Let's get to Jesus. And he had told so many people his testimony had gone so far without social media. Nothing against anybody watching online. But he didn't have Facebook. He didn't have cell phones. He didn't have a newspaper to publish an article in. He didn't have an automobile. He didn't have a bicycle. He was a poor man. He didn't even have clothes to put on until Jesus got him some. But he had Jesus. Amen. He didn't have much, but he gave Jesus everything he had. And God took what Jesus, what he had, and God used this man. You read the, you continue reading the rest of the Luke chapter 8. You'll find a, a centurion who comes to Christ and says, My daughter's dying. And it's in the same city of the Gadarenes where he raised that little girl from the dead. Amen. Why? Because that man had been telling his testimony. He had been spreading the gospel all over town. Everybody who knew him as a worldly outcast now knew him as a follower of Jesus Christ. And one man made a difference in that town. Because of that man's testimony, the, 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 the centurion went to Jesus and, and the little boy, girl got healed. It's in that same chapter where you find, in the same city, that you find the lady who went 12 years with an issue of blood and the doctors could do nothing for her. But it's in that same town where the maniac got saved where she crawled through the crowd and she reached up and touched the hem of Jesus' garment and Jesus stopped and said, somebody touched me. Why? Because heaven and hell became real to one man. He never started a church that we know of. But he became a voice telling everybody he could, everywhere he could, that Jesus is real. Jesus is real. And it changed his life. Listen. If we're going to do, do a mission work in Longmont, if we're going to get fired up enough to be willing to sacrifice to be a missionary to, to help a missionary in the Philippines or or in Asia or in Africa or in Europe or in, or in Australia, if we're going to help start churches around the uh, around the North, uh, North America and South America, listen. If you don't care enough to tell your neighbor, you're not going to care enough to tell the person around the world. Listen, we need somebody to be a maniac for Jesus. So 
Well, I'm not qualified. I've never gone to Bible college. Neither had he. As a matter of fact, he only probably had one change of clothes. He didn't have a house. He didn't, he, he, he didn't have much education. He had only been a Christian for a very short period of time. But he says, I can tell people what I do know. I can be a witness. Isn't that what Jesus said for us to do in Acts chapter 1? And ye shall be a witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and all Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the world. Listen, he said, I, don't, I might not be able to get too far, but I can start here in my city of, of Gadara and I can tell everybody I can in Gadara and I can tell everybody I can in my county, so to speak, of Decapolis and I can get the gospel out. I guarantee you he didn't stop there. I guarantee you if he was that fired up to get the gospel all over Decapolis, he was fired up, and up enough to say, hey, I hear there's a preacher by the name of Paul who's preaching way over there in Italy. I want to get the gospel out there too. How can I get money over there to, to, to Paul over there in Italy so I can, I can be a part of that work too? How can I get some money to, to uh, 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 Matthew? It is recorded that Matthew went down to uh, uh, Africa and would end up dying down in Africa. And he would hear about Matthew. And he says, I want to help Matthew down there in Africa. Listen. It's time we get excited about something worth getting excited about. I saw recently that uh, the elections here in the United States, they're going to spend over $10 million in trying to win an election. Between Trump and Biden, over, well over $10 million will be spent on winning an election for four years in office. Four years. How about eternity? How about investing in eternity? How about investing in keeping somebody out of hell? Listen, I'm not opposed to supporting political uh, activism. I'm all for that. But if, when political activism is more important than soul winning, your priorities are out of whack. Be a maniac for Jesus. So I'm not qualified. Baloney. If you're saved, you're qualified. So I don't know what I'm doing. How'd you get saved? If you don't, if you don't know how you got saved, you might not be saved. Talk to, come up to the altar here in a little bit and we'll get that settled. If you know how you got saved, tell somebody else how you got saved. So I don't have all the verses memorized. I guarantee you, neither did the maniac of the Gadarenes. He might, not have, even, he might have even said things he probably shouldn't have said. I, I hate to admit to this, but, but I have not always been a very <clears throat> polite soul winner. I remember one time I was soul winning out in Highland, Indiana. I'd been knocked on doors and knocked on doors and knocked on doors and knocked on doors and knocked on doors. And I was so tired of people shutting the door on my face. Somebody shut the door on my face and I said, fine, go to hell then. I don't recommend saying that to people. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Don't do what I did there. That was a mistake. Don't copy that. Okay. That is one on the don't do, oh, that's on the don't do list of soul winning. <laughs> and, and, and I was a Bible college student at the time. And uh, <laughs> made me even dumber, okay? But listen, I would rather someone go soul winning the wrong way than not go soul winning the right way. I would, I would rather someone come to church dressed wrongly than stay at home dressed rightly. The maniac of the Gadarenes. 
only been saved for a short period of time, he went back to those who had hurt him and said, Jesus loves you. And he got so excited, he turned that whole city around. The same people that kicked him out were, the, were the, did you see that? The people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him. The same people that kicked him out were there waiting. Jesus, I don't know what this guy's been talking about, but we want to hear from you. How about you? How about you? If you're here and you're saved, I want, you to, I want to remind you what you got saved from. An eternity separated from God and all that he is. An eternity in hell. And if you were on your way to hell, that must have mean you were a pretty rotten sinner. And Jesus came in this earth and he died on the cross for you. So that, he could take, so that you could call upon him, receive him as your savior, so that he, you could spend an eternity with him in heaven, which he purchased. And the only reason we're on our way to heaven is because of him. The only thing that we get to enjoy in this world is knowing we're going to heaven, and it's all because of him. The maniac in the gather of, of Gadara realized how wonderful salvation was. Because he realized he was this far away from hell before he got saved. And he wanted everybody to know about it. How about you? Do you want other people to know you're, they're on their way to heaven? Say, but not everybody wants to know. How do you know? Have you asked them all? And if they don't want it, well, th that's their, their choice. I guarantee you there's other people who do. I mean, some people don't like okra. Some people don't realize how good okra is, and they, they'll willingly turn it down when it's one of, it's one of the best foods you could eat. Amen. At least somebody here knows it. <laughs> Listen. Is it real to you? Is it real to you? We're here about Missions. People are dying, going to hell, and we, we're trying to get people to, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to help others who are able to go over to go and get the gospel to them. So that when we get to heaven, one day we'll get to see the people who are in heaven because we were willing to give a little bit of, our, of, of what God's given us. Is it real to you? Do we go to soul winning regularly? Is it real to us? Do we hand out gospel tracts? Is it real to us? Are we excited about Jesus saving us? Is it real to us? Has it changed our life? Is it real to us? Are we willing to reconcile with those who have hurt us? Is it real to us? Because it was real to him. And when it became real to him, he was willing to face the hard decisions of going to the same people who had chained him to the gravestones Going to the same people who had spit on him, rejected him, abandoned him, cursed him, and say, listen, Jesus loves you. And as a result of what he did for Christ, when Christ came back, they were waiting. Listen, is it real to us? Is it real to us? If you're here today and you're not saved, I hope you get saved today. If you are saved, let it be real to you. Let, it real, let yourself realize that Jesus gave everything so that we could be saved. Is it so much for us to give a little bit so others can get saved? Maybe. Maybe. Surrender to go to the mission field ourselves. Jesus, Jesus left heaven to come to us to tell us how we can get saved. Maybe I should be willing to leave where I'm, where I'm comfortable and go somewhere where it's not very comfortable so I can tell them how to get saved. I don't know. But if nothing else, you can go across the street. 
if the maniac could talk to the people who chained him up to the graveyard and tell them about Jesus, maybe we can tell the, pe tell the person who cussed us out about Jesus and tell them Jesus still loves them. Real quickly, some of the best visits I've ever had are with people who've cussed me out before. I, re I read a missionary story about a, a, a man. He traveled, he traveled four days up into the jungle to visit a town that had never been visited before, never been evangelized before. And while he was there, a, a man told him if he, that, that he was going to kill him if he didn't get out of the town. So the man left. He went back town to his village. He fasted for, for uh, several weeks and went back up to that village, went back to the same man's house, and the man said, after you left, I realized that I, that, 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 uh, I might die, and I probably ought to listen to what you had to say. The same man that threatened to kill him the last time got saved the next time. I don't know about you, but I, I've been soul winning before in the country, folks. I'm from the country. In the country, it's not uncommon for people to meet strangers at the door with a shotgun. When it says trespassers will be shot, survivors will be shot again, it's not a joke out there. And I've, I've been greeted at the door with a shotgun in my face. I've had dogs sicked on me before. It's not fun, but it does give great stories. And occasionally they get saved. Is it worth it? Is it real to you? Is it real to you? Because it became real to that one man and it made a difference in the entire region. He became a missionary. Not going to God, not going, he didn't go to Bible college. I do recommend you get some education from your preacher before trying to be a missionary. This man, Jesus didn't want to, didn't, said, I'm not going to teach you anything. You just go do it on your own. And he did the best he could. And the whole city says, Lord, we need to know more about this stuff. It was real to him. Is it real to you? Is it real enough for you to give up your rock and roll music? Is it real enough for you to give up your worldly music, uh, your worldly television? Is it real enough to get excited about Christ? Is it real enough to be faithful to church? Is it real enough to, 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 to bug preacher enough to say, listen, I don't want to go away because I don't want to leave Longmont. I don't want to, I don't want to let the people here die and go to hell. I want you to start a Bible college. I want you to teach me. Let's just get real here. I don't know, brother, I, I don't know of another Bible college that's going to teach somebody how to be a daily soul winner. I'm just being honest with you. You got a premier preacher here. This man is one of my heroes. I'm, I, I, am, I, am, I am humbled and honored to be able to preach behind his pulpit. Listen, get behind this man and say, teach me how we can reach this city for Christ. How we can do more for this, to, to reach this world for Christ. Let it be real to you. Let it be real to you. Father, oh God, please, meet with us tonight. God, I want it to be real. Lord, I don't want to go through this life and people look at me and think, well, if that's what Christianity is all about, I don't know if, this, if it's worth it. If it's not real to Him, it's not, uh, listen, I don't want it. I, Lord, uh, Lord, I want it to be real when people look at my life, when people look at my family. I want them to see that there's a real God in heaven that's worth serving. Oh, God, please, Holy Spirit of God, move fresh upon us tonight. Bless, something, bless the service. Have your will and your way in all that is done. Oh, God, we need you tonight. Lord, please, do what only you can. Amen. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Let's all stand together. If God spoke to your heart, the pianist is going to begin to play. You come. You pray at the altar. If anybody needs to be saved, you come and let me know. We'll help you with that. If